We want these minutes back, eh? Alec. <laughs> it's not easy to summarize a 800 pages document in an hour or so. <laughs> yeah. So no, we're, no, we will uh, not do that. <laughs> Go ahead. The, Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> the recording has started. So welcome everyone to the Global Network webinars. Um, my name is Alexander Loschke and I will be moderating this webinar today together with my colleagues Yussi Sang and Sean Lovell. Um, today we're excited to have Gabriel Gomez and Clarence Leo of the UN Statistics Division from my own branch actually uh, with us who will present on the Handbook on Management and Organization of National Statistical Systems. Um, our two speakers will present the handbook's features and will also talk about how to keep it uh, relevant and up to date. So this is the fourth edition of the handbook and Gabriel for sure will tell us more about that. It was endorsed uh, by the 52nd session of the Statistical Commission in 2021 and uh, is a non-prescriptive compendium targeting mainly chief statisticians, senior managers and staff members, uh, other staff members of statistical organizations. Um, the handbook provides guidance on developing and maintaining national statistical capacity that is fit for purpose and appraises critical issues and topics. So to remain relevant, the handbook has been designed as a living document and this will also be explained. Uh, so Gabriel will present the genesis of the handbook, its structure and content, and Clarence will then also um, provide a short demo of the mobile device compatible format and the printer friendly uh, version of the handbook. And both are available, of course, on the UNSD website, and we will share the link later on. So during today's webinar, we will also reflect on mechanisms to keep the handbook up to date. So let me now very briefly introduce our two speakers. So we have uh, Gabriel, who has been an interregional advisor on the organization and management of national statistical systems at the UN Statistics Division in New York since 2015. <clears throat> He's responsible for the implementation and monitoring of various global initiatives and programs aimed at modernizing the institutional frameworks and governance of national statistical systems. Um, before coming to New York, he started in the UN as a regional statistical advisor at the UN Economic Commission for Europe and before that, he worked at the Swiss Federal Statistics uh, Statistical Office and also at EFTA, the European Free Trade Association. Clarence is uh, part of the Data Innovation and Capacity Building Branch of the United Nations Statistics Division and manages the branch's websites and web applications, including our UN Statistics Wiki. He's also responsible for supporting the UN Committee of Experts for Big Data and Data Science for Official Statistics and its regional hubs and task teams. Previously, he worked in the International Trade Statistics Branch at UNSD. So before I, uh, we really start and I hand over to Gabriel, just two, three things. Uh, we will first hear the presentation and then we will have a Q&A session at the end. Um, as always, please feel free to write comments and questions into the meeting chat at any time. Um, during the Q&A session, you can also raise your hand virtually and then you can ask the question yourself if you uh, like that. Uh, th this usually creates a more interactive atmosphere, so we actually uh, prefer that. So as always, this Global Network webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the Global Network uh, at yammer.com slash unstats. And we invite you to continue the discussions on the Global Network after the webinar. So now over to you, Gabriel and Clarence. Um, the floor is all yours. Thanks. Thank you very much, Alex, for the uh, introduction. I hope that you can see now my uh, my screen. 
with the, the slide about the handbook on management and organization of national statistical systems. Uh, dear colleagues, good uh, morning, afternoon, evening or even night for some of you. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to, to be here and, and discuss with you the, the handbook on management and organization of national statistical systems. And I hope that we will have a little bit of time to discuss a little bit more at the end how we could maintain this handbook a relevant document. We know that the environment we are working in uh, or, or interacting with is changing very, very quickly. And it means that this handbook will also have to adapt very quickly to this changing environment. So if uh, you allow, uh, I will I will now go to the to the to the first slide. So basically the structure of the presentation, we will explain to you a little bit the genesis of the of the handbook. So where did, where did we start? What were the different uh, 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 steps in the process? And we will discuss the drafting modalities. After that, we will present but very, very quickly the structure and the content. You can imagine that for a compendium of 800 pages, it would be difficult within an hour to do it. Clarence, my colleague, will then uh, present to you the features. I mean, the online features of this handbook, uh, and then we will uh, we will discuss uh, how to keep the handbook up to date. So this is a little bit the the, the program of this uh, of this next hour. Uh, the handbook actually uh, on management and organization of national statistical systems is part of a series of of handbook that were called handbook uh, of statistical organization. So the primary objective since the beginning, so since 54, was to guide chief statisticians and senior managers of national statistical organizations in dev developing, of course, there is an element of capacity building or capability building and maintaining uh, statistical capacity that is fit for purpose. The first one was published in 54, and we had a second edition in 80 that was a targeting uh, was a, a kind of a study on the organization of national statistical services and related management issues. So the idea of a system was not really there. And then the third edition in 2003 was the operation and organization of a statistical agency. So focusing a little bit more on the national statistical office. So of course, since then, we had a few changes. So what did change since 2003? Many things. Of course, I don't mention here the, ter the economic turmoil of 2008, but we had that one too. But in 2030 or in, in 2015, we had to think all together how to produce the SDG indicators, more than 230 indicators to follow up on progress towards the sustainable development goals. But this is one thing we had actually rather quite a lot of time to do that. But we also know that in the meantime, we had the COVID-19 and we had the need or we got the request to produce information to measure the impact of the pandemic. So to address the impact of the pandemic, but also to monitor recovery policies. Uh, and then if you if you think a, a bit about that, we have on one side and this is the left side, the stress on the demand. And this stress is on us, is the scope with the 230 indicators, but even more because of the of, of the COVID-19, the granularity of what we call also sometimes a data disaggregation and the quality. And among them, timeliness is an important one. We want to have data now and not now data from yesterday. On top of that, since COVID-19, something that was added to this, to that stress, is resilience and agility. We noticed during COVID-19 that our regular production processes were impacted by COVID-19. That's number one. So we were not able anymore to produce what we used to produce. And second thing, we'd got additional requests for data, statistics and indicators to monitor the impact of the pandemic. Now, on the other hand, of course, what changes also from 2003 is the data ecosystem. And I mentioned it before, we have this digital transformation. We have totally different or more data sources than the traditional one. Big data is an example, but we have also some that we have forgotten, like uh, administrative data. And then we have a big, a broader data community around us. So basically specialists on data that are producing data, that are using data, that can help 
us in our endeavor. In order to bridge actually the uh, opportunities with the challenges, we need to transform. And this is actually what the handbook is all about. It's about integration and standardization. It's about new methodologies. It's about the institutional environment. And this is fundamental because we sometimes forget it, that the institutional environment must enable this transformation. We have the infrastructure, the know-how, which is core and is also core in the handbook. And then we have these soft skills like leadership, coordination, partnership, and the handbook already discussed this uh, stewardship or data stewardship. So the way we are leading to some extent or steering the data community. So these are the changes. So now very quickly in at the 48th session of the UN Statistical Commission in 2017, we, UNSD, were requested uh, uh, to revise the 2003 edition of the handbook. Actually, at the end, it was not a revision. It was much more than a revision. We rewrote the whole book. This is something we have to keep in mind, and that's why it took us so much time. In the 49th session, actually, we proposed uh, an, an, uh, an, an outline, a structure of the handbook that was endorsed eventually. And we, and then the Statistical Commission insisted once again in 2018 about the fact that we should definitely take into account the city gap, uh, the Cape Town uh, Global Action Plan in the handbook, but also the outcome of the Transformative Agenda Initiative, uh, since these two initiatives are very important to help us to structure and think about what could be statistics in a few years. At the 51st session of the UN Statistical Commission in 2020, uh, the Commission revised a slightly revised structure of the handbook. And we can imagine that while drafting, not only things change around us, but also we noticed that we had maybe a few overlap and a few gaps there. But also at that moment, the new name of the handbook was proposed, basically Handbook on Management and Organization of National Statistical Syst Systems. Sorry for that. So, I mean, also something that was very important, the instructions that we have received instructions. I mean, uh, the elements that we agreed upon, that the handbook should be structured around or, 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 co or constructed, uh, conceived around this important feature. The handbook must be conceived as a non-prescriptive living compendium available electro electronically. The non-prescriptive is important, which made our task sometimes difficult because we had to discuss in the handbook not only one solution that we could see as the solution, but also uh, different other scenarios like the B, C, D. And we can imagine that a seed does not have the same requirement as a landlocked country, does not have the same requirement as a huge country, and does not maybe have the same requirement as a federal state. So these elements are very important. It was also quite clear that we, the mandate we got from the Statistical Commission, that chapters uh, individually and the whole handbook should be available in the print, in the printer friendly format. Of course, I mean, it's important that people still can download the document and print the documents. And, and, and Clarence is going to tell you more about that. Uh, one point also important was that references, country examples and related materials in the handbook as much as possible should be available through web links. I mean, if the document was a living document on the web, we don't want these huge boxes on each pages where we describe the country best practices. Uh, instead, we prefer to have web links. It's also easier to uh, keep the document updated because it's easier to change a link rather than every second year to redraft fully uh, a success story. While each chapter is a standalone, so basically you can read each chapter alone, they are linked, of course, together through hyperlinks where relevant. So when you read a chapter and more information is provided in another one, you can always click and then go to that chapter and read more about that. So, and the last point, which is an important one, the handbook should be regularly updated and revised. Now, of course, I mean, we have not done that alone. 
we had first a beautiful uh, drafting team. All these uh, senior experts that have been working uh, with us were not working all at the same time, of course, but all of them have been working uh, extensively with UNSD. Uh, Halgrimur, Marco, Trevor, Jan, Heinrich, Marge, Michael and Haley. Uh, you have the pictures here. It was not always easy to find all these pictures, but I would like to thank them once again. Then beside this, actually, we had an advisory group that was created and the advisory group played a fundamental role because the advisory group was guiding us the drafting team and we had a lot of back and forth with the advisory group two, three, four times with, un with one single chapter until we got to something that made sense for them and basically for uh, our audience. Here you have the countries that were member of this uh, of this advisory group. We had the honor to have with us Brazil, Colombia, Ghana, Kenya, Malaysia, Mongolia, Philippines, Poland, South Africa, Suriname, United Kingdom and, and Palestine. And uh, we had also a certain number of international organizations or partner organizations like Paris 21, CESRIC, the five regional commissions, FAO, ILO, UNCTAD, the Asian Development Bank, and of course, last not least, Eurostat. And I would like to thank you, Eurostat, because without their also financial contributions, this handbook would not exist. So, I mean, the underlying model, because when we started to draft this handbook, I mean, we had to think about a structure. So basically some models that were available. Actually, the three models that have been used uh, to structure actually as the backbone of the handbook are three models that were once developed a while ago by UNECE, but are now implemented in all regions. First, we have the GLOSS, which is a generic law for official statistics. And actually, the GLOSS is very close to the fundamental principles for official statistics, of course. We have the GSPPM, which is a generic statistical business process model, which is a production model, which is, of course, fundamental. And since the handbook was about management and organization of national statistical systems, we have used also GAMSO, which is a generic activity model for statistical organizations, which is a model about governance. And these three models have been extremely important for us, to us, in order to draft this handbook and have a, a structure that makes sense when we come to, uh, to, the, to the management and organization of national statistical systems. Now, very quickly, the chapters. And you can see these models there, right? the chapters that we have, and unfortunately, I don't have time now to go through each of them. You can imagine that. We have a chapter that is about the introduction. This chapter is very important because it explains to you what you will find in the handbook. And I would advise any readers to start with this chapter because it will tell you, and I will show you a slide later on, it will tell you which chapters actually or inform you which chapter could be useful for you. Chapter two is really a standalone chapter. This chapter two is not only for statisticians or chief statisticians and so on, but for a much broader audience and discuss and present what official statistics is. And it gives you a general overview. I would like to tell you here, and unfortunately we don't have the budget at the moment, that the idea of chapter two was actually to have it available in a printed format in all UN languages. But unfortunately, at the moment, we don't see where we could get the funds to do it, and also to some extent the human resources to do it. But if we can get some support eventually from partner organizations, bilateral or multilateral, this is of course something we would like to do. Then we have the chapter three, that is the basis of official statistics, very close actually to the principles. The national statistical system, the National Statistical Office, which is in the handbook, actually the core organization, the one leading and coordinating the national statistical system, but also the one actually facilitating the partnership with stakeholders outside the national statistical system. The users and their needs, we would not exist without users, so they are very important. Quality management, which is fundamental also in a user perspective. 
data sources, collection and processing. And this is really a chapter that is rather di very different from what we had in the past, because you can imagine that all these new data sources are also described there. Analysis and analytical frameworks, dissemination of official statistics. What kind of means do we have to disseminate statistics? Modern one. The common statistical infrastructure that supports the production of statistics, human resources management and development, data information and knowledge management, information technology management, again fundamental, because this actually has changed tremendously since 2003. Then we have one which is about managing uh, uh, buildings, physical space and, and finance. In this one, we have also added sections about disaster management. So basically, what do we do as producer of official statistics when a calamity or disaster happen, like the COVID-19? How do we maintain our production? So this is something that we have also integrated there. Maybe in the future, we could have a separate chapter, but at the moment, this is where it is. And then the international statistical system, uh, definitions, uh, the international statistical system, you have the interrelation between the national statistical system and the international one, the international organizations. We have a glossary and I would invite you to read this glossary. Uh, I think it's very, very useful with definitions and explanatory notes and then a certain number of annexes. Um, the handbook, as I mentioned before, is not something to be read by, I mean, I would say from the chapter one to the chapter 16 including the glossary and the annexes. There are different ways of reading the handbook. You can start with the chapter 10 if you're interested on dissemination and then read users and their needs, etc. So you're totally free. I mean, uh, and it's possible to read one chapter and then another, not in a chronological order. Nevertheless, I mean, uh, we have uh, together with the drafting team, we have been thinking about what are the chapter that could be useful for different uh, um, uh, use a group and uh, here is a list, but you can see that actually the handbook and this is the most important point here has been drafted first for chief statisticians and, and managers of statistical organizations, but actually I think there is something there for everybody. Also the general public, the other international and regional agencies, etc, etc. Uh, we got a lot of positive feedback from our colleagues working in the resident coordinator's office. So actually in the offices of our ambassadors, UN ambassadors in the countries that are using extensively this handbook to understand what is a national statistical system and how to help a country. I mean, to build up uh, a sound national statistical system that is effective and efficient which is actually something that is very important uh, uh, when we don't have or when we have only limited resources, financial and human. After this, then I will give the floor to uh, Clarence, who will explain to you how this, uh, how, how this handbook is available on the web. Uh, Clarence, uh, the floor is yours and I close my... Yes, done, please. Hi everyone. <clears throat> so this is the website of the handbook. Um, here I'll just touch quickly on the printer friendly PDF versions that um, Gabriel mentioned earlier. We have them available by individual chapter and as the full handbook. But as Gabriel mentioned, you know, this is a beefy handbook. It has 930 pages, it's 50 megabytes. And as you saw from the last slide, all of it is not applicable to every user group. So we have it um available by chapter which kind of acts as you know some of these chapters can act as standalone guides so you know you can we have them available this is for example chapter 14 you know it each has their own table of contents and the contents of the chapter um this so you don't have to download the whole book then we have we'll move on to the i'll post the url to this page later but we have the legacy handbook, so you can see the history and the previous versions of the handbook, and also the past and future thematic conferences where the handbook is discussed and where updates to the handbook will also be discussed. Um, to get to the mobile compatible in the HTML5 version of the handbook, you click on this button or on this page, and that brings us over here <clears throat> where you have the entire outline of the handbook available here on the right side. 
if you click on the chapter, you get the first level of <clears throat> of section titles, and it's very easy to navigate through. Um, as an example, you can also close the chapters and you can also preview chapters by clicking right next to the chapter title so you don't have to actually go through it. So you can see, you know, if you don't want to download it and then you just want to browse through and see which sections would be applicable to you and your work, you can easily navigate through and, and find what you want. Another way to do it is through the search bar, which is a very powerful search bar. So let's say I'm interested in national accounts. I don't want to look through the whole 900 pages, so I click national accounts. Sorry. And it's not working, of course. So here we have all the, the listings of national accounts throughout the yearbook. So here we have section 9.4. It brought me right away, but also throughout the handbook, it'll show me wherever national accounts is mentioned. Uh, just a couple other features of the handbook is you can print each section individually. So if I let's I was interested in 5.2 and I didn't want to go back up to the PDF versions, I could just click print here. And you would be presented with just being able to print this section. We have favorites, so you know you want to you want to keep on coming back to this um, handbook. You can set this 5.2 as a favorite and then this button will show you your list of saved favorites. So you can jump to the sections that you saved in advance to uh, for quick for quick um, access. We also have these left these back and forward buttons. So as you're reading through, you hit five two. You don't want to. You might be somewhere else. See, I'm here, chapter three four. I just hit right, and I'll be brought to five three, and I'll, I can keep going forward. <clears throat> now we have a lot of feedback from users that asked for translation for the year for the handbook and um, unfortunately we don't we didn't have the resources to translate to all official languages so as a stopgap we recommend using google translate so there's an extension for google translate for most uh, major browsers i'll just give you a quick example of it here you can see it here on my on my bar if i click it and i click translate this page I can choose what language I would I want the page translated to. So here's French, Arabic, Spanish, <clears throat> and you get the idea. Um, of course, this translation isn't as perfect as we would like it to be. Of course, we'd want to have it done by human translation. So, um, but you know, this is a, a pretty good stopgap for now until we get the resources to be able to to do this. Um, I also wanted to let me go back to English. Uh, draw your attention to Annex 7. Which is the International Statistical System. So we had surveys sent to many of the inter, um, organizations in the International Statistical System. And we had them fill out surveys and we have instead of putting this in a printed yearbook where things would become obsolete quite quickly, we have it available as links to the cards which are on the UN stats wiki. So I'll show that to you quickly here. The links, so the links in the in the yearbook go to each individual organization if you're only interested in one organization, or you can click here, which will show you all of the organizations. Each org this this is an example for EAC, but you can see that every organization will have this all filled out. You can have contact information, you can find out their mandates, their statistical units, and their program of work. So this is great for if you're at a desktop, but <clears throat> a lot of us now, and I believe the majority of web browsing now is on the on mobile devices. So here, I hope you can see. We should have switched to a mobile view. So here we Lawrence, still have the yes. I still see NX seven. Okay, so but it is it in the mobile view though? No. I don't think so. Yeah, it's a mobile view. It's is it mobile the mobile view? view? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's not the PDF. Yeah. 
OK, but is it the smaller version? I there see it as a regular uh, web page. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go okay. ahead and we'll see. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Well, if it's not uploading, uh, I mean, if it's not updating to the mobile view on your side, uh, on your mobile phone, you have a hamburger menu here on the top right, where you can still access the table of contents, the favorites, the um, add to favorites, the search bar is all maintained on the mobile version of the website. The back and forward navigation is still available. So it, we tried to make this as easy as possible to navigate on a mobile device. Um, at this point, I just wanted to, we wanted to mention the software that we used for the handbook. We used Adobe FrameMaker. And um, on paper, it is a tool that allows you to have one master document for publishing. And you can export to an HTML website, as you see here, a PDF which you saw in the printable format and other formats such as ebooks and and uh, you know other publishing formats but so we re we did a lot of research before we started uh, tackling this we we hired consultants we looked and there were reports and you know this this was the the best tool on the market at the time for this purpose uh, we hired an entire an external contractor to work on this with us to convert our document into this frame maker format to be able to export into all these um, published editions and we encountered a lot of issues uh, you know there were they were all small issues you know images weren't displaying links got corrupted uh, footnotes were corrupted uh, footnotes were only available per section per chapter and not through the whole document we had various formatting issues and you know the and the interface was not very flexible you know if we wanted something changed it was it took weeks if at all and some we had to make a lot of compromises with this um you know our, our we we reached out, our consultant had to re research spent weeks researching various issues we had to contact adobe we're actually still waiting from adobe to hear back on various issues so you know this just um Having to deal with all this added a lot of time and complexity to completing the yearbook. And you know, we the, the, the idea of using this this software was that because we plan this as a, as a living document, and you know, updates will be coming in on a regular basis, on a quarterly basis, annual basis. And you know, we wanted to be able to make updates quickly and push them out as quickly as possible to have this <clears throat> as a as a living document. But you know, this have facing these issues with us the software will you know has has delayed a lot of this so you know uh, we we also want to post this to you because i've already received a lot of questions about how we we've we've done this right a lot of it, parties are interested especially in our industry in our field everyone wants everyone's publishing guidebooks and handbooks right and this is very useful to have it available as a html document and as a pdf document but i had to tell them you know this is the best software on the market, but we're still having all these issues and I don't not sure if I recommend it. And we'd like to also post a question to you if any of you are aware of any software that can do the same thing without all these issues. And yeah, so I'll, I'll post this back to uh, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clarence. Yes, and, and as you mentioned now, I mean, now basically if we have to make some updates, we will have to make an update on two master versions, right? The HTML one and the PDF one in the same software, but in two versions. And this is, of course, not what we wanted, and this will just double our work. And and again, um, this this is going probably to be an issue, but we will we'll, we'll try to find a solution. And if someone has the solution, another software that could do that, for 800 pages, so it's a heavy document. Uh, please let us know. Uh, at the end, we will give you some email addresses. Uh, uh, email addresses for 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 that. Uh, now, if I go, I'll go to my last, actually my last slide. But uh, 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 I I wanted maybe to to mention. Well, let's go to the last slide, and I will mention after. So the 52nd session of the UN Statistical Commission endorsed, and this is now about how are we going to keep the handbook alive? So how are we going to keep the handbook as 
I mean, a relevant document over time, and this is very important. Uh, you have seen that in average before, I think it was 25 years between, between two versions of the handbook. We don't want that because in 25 years, it will be too late, right? So, I mean, the 52 session, uh, 52nd session of the UN uh, Statcom actually endorsed the handbook, as it was mentioned before by, um, by Alex, but actually the 20, the 52nd session also told us that we were we had two ways or two different uh, uh, um, uh, how can I say that uh, work to be done on the handbook to keep it relevant. The first one is what we call the regular updates, and these regular updates we can do two three times a year. For example, adding a new success story, original initiatives. Uh, updating and internet links and some other factual information that we could just like update. It could be also a mistake uh, that we can correct very quickly. The second one, and this is a little bit heavier, it's about revisions. And these revisions can be in-depth modification of the coverage, the substance, or even the structure of the chapters of some of the sections of the handbook. And the idea for these revision, revision is to have them every second, third year. It doesn't mean we redraft the handbook every third year, but we could think about redrafting a chapter or adding a chapter every second, third year. Again, it can be every fifth year, but let's say that every second, third year, we can ask ourselves if there is really a need for a partial revision of the of the handbook and and the way we do that and this is actually and this is an important point how do we get the information how do we get actually the input so that we can uh revise this handbook and there the the the, the statistical commission actually told us that we should continue as much as possible with what we call the thematic conferences. And this is exactly what uh, what the Clarence mentioned before. Unfortunately, because COVID, we had only three thematic conferences. We had this one for the Caribbean. We had one for Asia and the Asia, and we had one for uh, Anglophone Africa. And after that, we had to stop. Our idea is to continue with thematic conferences. They can be independent of any other regular regional or sub-regional events, but maybe this is not the way we're going to take. They can be also combined with other activities that uh, are going to happen in, in regions or sub-regions and add maybe one or two sessions to something that is already uh, on the uh, on the agenda. So this is a little bit how, but of course, many other events are going there where we will try to extract the information that will be necessary for us to update this uh, this handbook. But you can see that this is a task, right? And we really, really count on all of you to inform us when you have the feeling that something in the handbook is outdated, when there is a new success story, etc. So in the 54 session, so the upcoming session, we could have called this webinar actually the road to the Statistical Commission, but it's not part of that one. But in the 54th, so the upcoming Statistical Commission this year, there is an item in the agenda where we actually propose as a revision. We propose to add a new chapter on governance of the national data ecosystem. We have a lot about, I mean, all the producers of data and statistics outside the national statistical system. How statistical officers and other producers of statistics can make use of alternative, innovative data sources. But the way we interact, there is there no single chapter dealing with that. We have the coordination of the national statistical system, but we have not something like this with the overall national data ecosystem. So the idea would be to have an additional chapter that could be at the moment short, right? And expand over time about partnership and collaboration between producers of official statistics and other data uh, communities in, uh, in the country. And then there are probably a few chapters they are probably there. We have to be a bit careful, but they are a bit too technical or detailed for the intended audience. Two here took two O, and it's only one. 
but I mean uh, uh, that could be a bit too technical or detailed. And then, of course, we would need we would need there also to rethink if we have not to simplify them to really speak to our audience, our audience there, and there are other documents in the handbook about detailed technical questions. This is really about management and organization of national statistical systems. So with that, I'm done, but I wanted also maybe just before concluding to thank the drafting team, my colleagues here at UNSD that have spent day and night with me uh, uh, in, 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 in drafting this handbook and working with our beautiful drafting team and interacting also with the advisory group. I would like to mention here Indira, uh, I have seen she's with us, so thank you so much Indira for that. We had also, and we have Clarence that actually made it possible to, to have it, I mean, on the web as you can see it. And I would like also to, to thank Maddy, who was my uh, intern from, from Kazakhstan, actually, that, that worked with me and he went through the whole handbook trying to identify some mistakes and, and, and in, inconsistencies. Thank you very much. This also was possible, thank the contribution of UNITAR, and I would like to, to thank Madina, which I believe is the feminine of Madi, but they are two different persons. Madina, thank you very much also for that. I think you are not with us, but it's recorded. So this is something that uh, for me is um, is uh, it's very, uh, very important um, to mention here. So thank you, everybody. And the floor is yours, uh, Alex. Yes. Uh, thanks so much, Gabriel and Clarence, for this presentation. I was also trying to uh, change the meeting option, so I hope this is, is now done. So in principle, now everyone, uh, please not all at the same time, but you can unmute yourself and uh, also put your camera on. And we will take now uh, the questions uh, as they come in. And I see already the hand up uh, of Misha, Misha uh, Bekindas. Um, please um, unmute yourself and ask the question if you wish. Hi, I'm Misha Belkindas. I'm the president of International Association of Official Statistics. Uh, uh, Gabriel, I I saw that there are a there is a group of uh, uh, NGOs which are, um, you know, in advisory board and so on, such like Paris 21 and CESRIC. Now, um, the IAOS has created a Krakow group which deals with use and misuse of statistics. So there you have the ex very good link with the use of statistics and in particular misuse of statistics. And it's also a link with your the whole ecosystem. So what uh, I think we need to discuss at some point and see if uh, you would like that uh, IOS uh, and I am I am assuring that IOS would be willing to contribute to the handbook and uh, to look at this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Misha. May I, Alex? I mean, uh, intervene. I mean, there. Thank you very much, uh, Misha. Y yes, I, I, I definitely think that uh, iOS has uh, has uh, a role to play in in keeping this uh, this handbook uh, up to date, uh, and uh, and we will have the opportunity to discuss that. Maybe also in Zambia. I will be in Zambia. Maybe we will have the opportunity to discuss that for further, and to think a little bit how we can we could interact. Uh, together, but I mean uh, a place, a place in the advisory group for sure, and uh, and 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 maybe even more than that. Thank you, thank you very much, Misha, for this proposal. Great, thanks a lot. Yeah, we we have we can talk in Zambia, of course. Thanks. Yes, um, thanks, thanks for this intervention. Intervention. Uh, we also have some comments in the meeting chat, and let me try to go. I mean, there are many, many comments. But let me try to distill the questions here and everyone else, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand or put it in the meeting chat. So there was a comment by uh, or question by Carlos Alberto Mendes, uh, president of uh, CNES. Um, 
Carlos, I'm not sure. Do you want to uh, ask the question yourself? If yes, please unmute yourself now. Otherwise, I can read it out. So, Carlos was asking, um, I'm writing from Cabo, uh, Cape Verde. Uh, I would like to know how the handbook treats official statistics versus unofficial statistics. And how should we approach and use unofficial statistics in decision making? Over to you. Gabriel. That 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 that's a that's a big question, right? The handbook has pages and pages discussing that, and 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 probably they are they are there is there is also something that we have to take into account in the different contexts and national and regional context. Now, basically, official official statistics are, are, are statistics that are produced actually very short, very very short statistics that are produced for others, right? So basically, statistics that are produced by public agencies or private one but mandated by pu public agencies that are produced according to a demand at the country level right and they are produced according to the fundamental principles of official statistics and if available a national statistical legislation ideally official statistics are also part of the national statistical program they are included there and a very important element is that when they are included in the program there must be a broad discussion not only with the members of the government but also users in the countries like the civil society the private business i mean the research communities etc i mean to discuss what are really the statistics that are needed for the development of the country those one are considered as official statistics but one point that is important it's not the place now to have a debate about that here right but one thing that is important there is always the possibility for additional statistics that are not maybe at the beginning considered as official to join the club of official statistics the advantage of official statistics or those one that are official statistics is that they can exchange between them confidential data because the rules of confidentiality they are working with are the same and they are actually prescribed by the national statistical legislation so there is an advantage in reusing information when you're a member of the national statistical system. I stop here because I don't think that is the, the, the point of, of this meeting to discuss that, but in very, 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 very short. And I miss probably a lot of other things. Yeah. Thank Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, then I see the hand now raised by two colleagues. Uh, first, we have Montir al Ansari uh, from Saudi Arabia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Monte, do you want to come in? Can, can you unmute yourself? Hi, everybody. I uh, hear you. Gabriel yes. and Alexander uh, for organizing this uh, useful uh, and informative session about the handbook. My question is regarding the new chapters on governance of the official statistics. This, uh, this chapter is written and will be published after the UN Statistical Commission or you are submitting the approval for uh, doing this uh, or updating the, the handbook with this chapter. If it's written, you could highlight a little bit on it uh, if, there, if, if there is a time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Montir. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, the, the, the point now is to start drafting this chapter, right? I mean, uh, of course, the request comes a little bit pro forma to the, the UN Statistical Commission, if I may say like this, because we got a lot of feedback already of people telling us it would be really cool to have such a such such a chapter in the handbook. So, I mean, this is that this will not even open a, a huge discussion. There is a need probably to start with something. Yeah, it will take some time to draft it. And again, a point that is very important in the handbook, we only present solutions that are waterproofed. 
So it's not the place where we tell the countries, oh, let's do it like this and let's do it like that. And then they do it and eventually say that this is not working at all, right? So it's something we have to be a little bit cautious there because what we are proposing in the handbook must be solutions that have been tested and they are working. And that's why this chapter on the on the governance of uh, of the data ecosystem is coming a little bit later. It's coming now. We are going to draft it now because at the time we were drafting the handbook, we thought, including of course the advisory group, we thought that it was probably a little bit premature to draft uh, something about about uh, uh, a data stewardship and governance of of the national data ecosystem. I hope I answered the question. <coughs> yes, thank, thank you. you. Um, I also see the hand up of Aberesh. I only see the first name or last name. I'm not sure. Aberesh, please come in and ask your question and please identify yourself. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. So uh, uh, my question is uh, uh, currently there is, uh, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations, Gabriel, for the book. Uh, and uh, currently there is an idea that coordination and standardization of the national statistical uh, system and statistical activities to be done by statistics department, which is in the planning ministry, other than the statistics office. So that, that, that means that the statistical regulatory activities to be conducted by uh, other ministry like planning ministry where they need so report us. So does the handbook have that option or what do you say, Gabriel? <laughs> now it we have a we have now a discussion that are more about the principles right than trust in statistics. We tried, of course. I mean, the handbook is not proposing that the policy ministry, so a ministry actually uh, uh, implementing policies, is in charge of coordinating the national statistical system. I mean, we can imagine that. <laughs> When, when, when the users are thinking about some of these data, they would have doubts, and I'm not saying it's true. I mean that it must happen, but they would have doubts if the, the there is not an interference from politicians and policymakers uh, on the data, because the same authority that has a policy and is actually assessed on the result of its policy is producing or producing, coordinating the overall statistical system. There are some cases and, and they, the handbook is presenting that and we are totally in favor of that and the contrary, that uh, uh, the statistical system can be, I would say, not hyper centralized. So on top of the National Statistical Office, having a certain number of other producers of official statistics that are often in ministries line ministries or agencies, but there is a way actually to protect these organizational units from the rest of the policy making infrastructure of that organization. And that's why, just to take an example in the handbook, we're very careful. We don't say that, and now it's just an example, that the Minister of Finance is a producer of official statistics. We say that the specific organizational unit in charge of governance finance statistics is part of the national statistical system. So this is something that is very important because we try, of course, to make a distinction between those using statistics and asking us what we should produce and those one discussing how we have to produce it. So this is a, a something that is important in terms of trust. Now, I think we have a <laughs> a fundamental principles implementation discussion, right? But thank you very much, Abarash, a good friend of mine, good colleague. Um, so I hope you're doing well too. Yeah, uh, thanks, Gabriel. And Abarash is, of course, the deputy chief statistician of the Ethiopian Statistical Service. Uh, sorry, Abarash, for not introducing you properly. Um, I see one more question uh, here in the chat, which I would like to take. Uh, by Matthew Shearing. Matthew, uh, would you like to come in or shall I read out the question? 
Hi, okay. uh, uh, hi Gabrielle, hi colleagues in New York. Um, yeah, basically, um, I think that um, uh, people can read the question there, but I think the point is that uh, we should start to, um, I think, uh, uh, live what we're what, live what we're kind of uh, proposing in this handbook in terms of the partnerships and the coordination, and particularly when we look at this new potential chapter on national data ecosystem. So when we think about doing that, uh, let's think about involving the people that we want to be in these partnerships with within the drafting of that section and, uh, and maybe even in uh, looking at what's sensible to uh, develop the other sections of the handbook as well and, uh, and a question comes to mind as well about how much within this within we as statisticians we tend to be quite internal quite introspective quite inward looking and we're doing better now but we need to do differently when we we do our own uh, internal things like this even within that it, is is the handbook? Uh, could the handbook be improved in terms of its the inputs from people from outside of national statistical officers? So reading the handbook, uh, it seems uh, it seems a little bit national statistical office centric. And, and could we in the future see some way of bringing in uh, those units we've been talking about in finance ministries, whatever, producing statistics within more into the drafting of this, and then weaponize it by by doing it in a different way? Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Of course, the mandate was to have a handbook on the management and organization of national statistical systems, right? I mean, it's a handbook about what we are doing. Now, uh, I understand your question. So we have two ways of doing that. We can ask the people that are member of, and this one has my preference, to ask the people that are member of the advisory group, and in particular the countries, to bring into the discussion their uh, 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 their own discussion in, in I would say a partnership and and communication and so on with their national data uh, ecosystem, and then bring it because the problem that we have there is that if we had let's let's say, let's say in short, I mean we could have these people in the advisory group and then we would have an advisory group of two or three hundred. Uh, persons not manageable at all. Already the size we have now is at the limit. Or ask the people that are in the group, and in particular those representing the country, not only to represent themselves, but to represent the overall data ecosystem. For the moment, this is the way. Now we could add, of course, we could add one or two, and that's a very good proposal, in the advisory group. We could add one or two, maybe NGOs, or, or, or university that is dealing with uh, 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 big data, for example, or innovative data sources, and to bring them in and represent basically themselves in the advisory group. That could be maybe a solution, but it's a good point, uh, Matthew. I, I agree with you that we have to enlarge and we have to make it clear to the member of the advisory group that are now there that they will not only represent themselves, but also the others at the country level. Thanks so much. Um, so we have like uh, two minutes left or so, or three. Um, I see one question, uh, the hand up by Jessamine Encarnacion from UN Women. So please, uh, Jessamine, come in. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, very quickly, congratulations for this great work on the handbook. I'm a fan of the handbook, so uh, great to have to see this updated. And that gender statistics has been integrated in in some of the in many sections of the handbook. So kudos to the group for for integrating gender. In that, in relation with that, and likewise on the first question, is the handbook missing something important? I just want to like you know uh, note uh, the extent by which the management and organization of the NSS calls for gender parity. Like, you know, to like it's not just on gender statistics data work per se, but also in terms of the management and the training of capacities, particularly in the leadership decision making of women. I think within the UN system, we know that, you know, the secretary general calls for gender parity and uh, I think the handbook should also, like you know, promote and deliberately, like you know, ensure that uh, there's uh, the leadership is equally and equitably shared uh, between the between the two. So over. The good point. The good point. Thank you very much. We have one. Uh, we have a one chapter on human resources, and this could be maybe strengthened there. 
uh, not only the gender issue, but also the ethnic representation, right? I think it's very important that the, the, the statistical office reflects actually the diversity of the country. And I think this is something that is very important. If we want the National Statistical Office to be as close as possible to the users. Thank you. So, um, yeah, an hour as always is a little bit too short. Um, so, uh, I don't see any more hands up. But Alex, we, uh, Alex yes. I have seen I have seen some of the members of the drafting team here, like March and Marco, ah. and I don't know others. If they can switch on their camera, it would be very nice to have them also there, so that we can see them. Marco, hi, how are you? I mean, it's very nice. It was it was a, a fantastic personal human endeavor. I mean, this 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 handbook, we have spent a lot of our time. I mean, uh, we we look a little bit. I mean, I look probably a little bit older. I mean, others may be younger, but I mean, it took us a lot of time and energy to do it and, and, and we are ready to continue. I know that March was with us a while ago. I would like also to think two persons that were have done more than 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 what they could have done. It's it's Stephen Vale from ECE that also at the end uh, 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 had a lot of uh, input in in the in the in the in this uh, process and Mr Snow the former chief statistician of Suriname that uh, that uh, also actually at the end very at really at the end of the process went also through the whole handbook and tried to look if here and there we had some uh, uh, inconsistencies so i would like on top of all the other one to thank these two but of course i would i would probably i miss a lot of others that have been working there. Don't say thank you to me. It's a teamwork. So, I mean, I've been one little element in this machinery and there have been so many people working hard for that. Thank you very much. And we will keep this handbook up to date, right? Yeah. Ah, March. Hey, <laughs> it's nice. Yes. So a little emotional end. <laughs> Thanks. Before we all go, um... We have two quick questions for you, online questions, which are not recorded and not shared with anyone but us as the organizers. And two really easy questions. One is popping up on your screen right now, so I learned something new and useful from this webinar. Um, this question and the following, which I will I will share in a few seconds are basically for us as the organizers of the global network webinars to gauge a little bit the interest in different topics and also to get some feedback for us on what we are doing. So I give you still maybe five seconds for this question and then I will launch the other one. Both questions will still be available in the meeting chat so you can still answer them there. And this is uh, the second question. Uh, I enjoyed the topic of this webinar, right? And you can uh, also give your opinion there. So uh, while we all fill out those um, short polls, may I please ask everyone to switch on the camera maybe for a few seconds and also switch on the mic and give uh, Gabriel Clarence and everyone who was involved in the handbook a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Gabriel. thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you for joining this Global Network webinar. Uh, we will share the recording and the slides on the Global Network, and uh, Gabriel and Clarence will also share uh, the, the recording and slides on the website of the handbook. Uh, please join us again next time. We will go on a little pause for the Global Network webinars because a lot of side events of the Statistical Commission are now coming up. And then uh, we will uh, pick up again after the Commission. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much for attending. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Thank thanks, you. organizers.